Hi, this is Greg Althaus, co-founder and CTO of Racken. Today we're going to be talking about digital rebar and manipulating boot environments and templates, specifically cloning and editing. So in this case we'll kind of talk about how to build, um, how to clone a boot environment to change it or create another instance of it, or to edit one and the same thing with templates. So I'll point out our documentation. In our operations section we have places that describe these operations that we're going to start doing. And let's get started. In this case, I have a digital rebar provision already up and running. It's got some boot environments and a machine, so I can kind of show things around. Um, and so we'll go to the CLI. Now, if you have your install environment already available, you can use the files in there to operate. Um, in this case, I'm going to operate as if we don't have that, so that we can kind of uh, do some testing and generation without that. So I'm going to make a temp directory. I'm going to it. In this case, I'm going to use DRCLI and say I want to create a new instance of Sledgehammer for some reason. I don't know why, but say I did. So I could say, okay, show Sledgehammer. And there's my Sledgehammer boot environment. So in this case, I might choose to export the format in YAML. So it's kind of easier to look at. And I go, okay, well, let me save that output as new sledgehammer YAML. So I, I can then go edit new sledgehammer. At this point, I can make these changes. Now, available is going to be replaced. So if it's not valid, and same with errors, some of the parameters aren't going to be consumed on a create, but they can still be there and, and they'll be replaced or ignored. At this point, I could change boot environments. I could update ISOs. I could switch, say I needed a new to su support a new version of Sledgehammer. I could change its checksum. I could make all these changes, but the main one I have to do if I'm creating a new one versus editing is change the name. Now, once the name's changed, this will actually be a key. If I try and create it without changing that, I'll get an error saying it already exists. With the rest of it, I'll use the contents. In this case, I have inline templates, so those will just be part of it. Um, and then I can the go forward from there. The interesting part is the name of the OS specifies the section of the TFTP directory that we'll use to serve the actual uh, kernel and initRDs out of. Um, if I leave that the alone, that'll reuse the sledgehammer image so that this ISO is then shared between the two. But if I rename it, I should rename the name as well so that those become unique spaces. Um, I could make other changes in edits. And then when I'm done, I save it. And at this point, I want to add it. So then I can say DRP uh, boot ends, create, say, let's read it from standard input and go off and create it. At this point, it will attempt to validate that all the ISOs are present and make it available. If it becomes available, I can then say bootems show new sledgehammer. And I can see that it gets print out, printed out and it's available and can be seen. Now, say I want to edit it after I've created it. So I've got the file around. I could go through the same export process um, that I did the first time with show. But in this case, let's say I messed up and I'm like, oh, no, 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 I want khammer. And I want to put it in the khammer directory. So then I can say, okay, now I need to update it. And I do the same thing. So I can say, or similar thing, I can say DRP CLI boot ends update new sledgehammer with new sledgehammer.yaml. And at this point it becomes and says it's updated. But if I look, available is now false and the errors now have some entries in them because they said, well, we couldn't find your K sledgehammer tarball in the ISOs directory. So I could, if I wanted, 
could come over here and go ISO into my assets directory, ISOs, and go, okay, move sledgehammer to K. problems there and then I could do DRP CLI ISOs upload K okay, sledgehammer as K okay, sledgehammer and now it's uploaded and since it got uploaded if I look at my new sledgehammer Notice it's now available because those direct that ISO was found and was able to be exploded. So I was able to resolve the errors and it became available. So that's the idea is if I make changes, I might need to update the ISO, whatever. Okay. Um, so that's kind of boot environments. Now templates work similarly, except that they are more content. So what I mean by that is if I do DRP CLI templates show root remote access dot template for example see how it's both an ID to identify it and then the contents encoded and even if I do it as format YAML it's a little more editable but I still have to worry about spacing and such and I can edit this way and then I can do the same update trick that I did before with the boot ends but a lot of times it's easier to use the up, upload feature. So I want to get the content. And so in this case, I'm going to use a little tool called JQ, which allows us to process um, JSON. So I want to get rid of the format. And um, contents. And notice it's still rendered as a JSON string. So if I give JQ an R, it'll actually show the content. So then I can say, well, let's save that as new template content. Okay. And I save it. And then I can edit it to my heart's content and get it to what I need it to be. Whatever. And then once I have that content, I can upload it. So then I can say, well, DRP templates upload and then I can say the new template content file as, and then if I use the template name that I used before, that will do an update. So upload is special in the sense that it will attempt to figure out whether it should do a create and create a new template ID or use the existing one and just update the content. This way the, the system, you can use upload without having to operate on the system. It also means that you can save the files off. So like if I had used the assets directory, I could edit those templates in place and upload them that way. So that kind of covers how we update. Uh, cloning works similarly. I can get the content and instead of using a new one, I can say new template, new temple. And then I can say, oh, okay, great. DRP CLI templates show new temple and there's my new content right now I can operate on that I can go include it in a boot environment I can clone the boot environment reference it to use the new templates so I can do all those actions and that's how you can update and create templates and boot environments cloning them for your use hopefully you found that useful as always, you can find more information at the docs. As you can see, we have some of the examples for cloning and editing and cloning, as well as a host of other things, as well as information about the data objects. And as always, you can look for other videos to move along in your process. Look forward to seeing you or talking with you next time. Thanks.